Okay, so perhaps now it's finally working, this little 3D squeak world I've been working on. Let's do it one step at a time. I create a little window, tiny thing. I'm now going to set a translation. You notice you can see the GUI, it's really tiny. Let's um, add a little pyramid and start it rotating. And now let's uh, stretch the window out so it covers the entire uh, squeak window. There we are. Okay. Now, to show you that this is really squeak, we're going to open up a new uh, color picker. And we're going to go ahead and add, oh, say, make the window green. Ish or red pinkish or yellowish or whatever and we could open that up again if we wanted Let's see we can select as we want cool let's close it now notice this little spinny thing is spinning as as before you've got it spinning at 15 an angle of 15 every tick, so we're going to set it down an angle of 5 at every tick. And uh, just to prove that this really is your average everyday um, squeak thingy, I'm going to grab a slider widget. and I'm going to start working with it. Let's see. Set the target. Well, we're going to click on the target. We're given two choices, our texture GUI or the world's paste up morph. So we're going to go with texture GUI. And now we're going to select the um, action selector, which I happen to know is um, Try angle rotation angle my colon and now we can slow it down or speed it up by moving the slider remember this is a 3d thing that I'm now controlling from the 2d elements so the GUI elements of squeak now just uh, one more little thing. Let's set the maximum value to, oh, say, uh, 50. And now we can set it down to 0 or set it up to 50, and it spins. And, of course, with any other value we wanted, we could go in and, and create sliders and, and little um, color palettes and everything. And we would have our uh, on-the-fly created uh, 3D con or controls for our 3D world. Now what will be really fun is when I start to figure out how to make 3D controls. Because just as we can control um, o, our translation vector for this thing by uh, programmatically typing it in, we could also create sliders to control the values so we can start to play with things and then eventually with mouse tracking we could create whole new kinds of GUI elements that would do interesting things or we could have um, code browsers that were three-dimensional if there was some extra information that we wanted to work with we could work with it and uh, spin things around so we could see different aspects of the code or zoom in or whatever. Whatever your imagination can do, uh, come up with, it seems like this would be doable. And of course, this is a very cumbersome, slow way of doing it. There are people working on implementations of OpenGL, which will be as much as 20 times as responsive as what I have right now. 
So this, is, I think, is a, a killer system for developing new uh, 3D apps, 3D interfaces, 3D games, etc. I'm quite happy with it.